Hi there. When I was rebuilding the amplifier the other day, I got to thinking that maybe if we actually went through the amplifier and looked at some of the features, it might help some others that have a similar amplifier from Rockola or any vacuum tube amplifier from that era. So this is going to be part one. I'm just going to look at the power supply, the power input, and the rectifier. Looking down in this corner of the schematic, and this is just a schematic that uh, they posted this or they taped this on the inside of the back cover of the jukebox. This is actually the only copy I have of this particular schematic. It's just a photograph of that uh, schematic. So the power comes in. This is the, the plug down here in the bottom right hand corner. It's plugged into the wall. 115 volts is what they were planning on at the time. And this is the input circuit. You can see it comes up into this socket, and this is the same socket that the speaker is plugged into. And the reason being is that if you look at the plug for the speaker, there's a jumper across these two pins. And the power comes in and goes through those two pins, and what happens is when you plug in the speaker, that basically enables this circuit. So you unplug the speaker, and the circuit doesn't get any power. And that's probably partially to protect the amplifier so that it's not operated when the speaker isn't connected, when there's no load on it. So the power comes into this transformer. And a couple of things to note on this transformer. This is an actual, just your, your typical, fully isolated. It's not an auto transformer. So that means that all of the secondary windings are completely floating from each other and from the primary. So we can build up whatever charge on any of these windings and they can be floating at whatever voltage they're allowed. So basically with the transformer there's I'm sure lots of videos on how transformers work but there's a potential difference on the inlet. That potential difference causes a current to flow in the circuit. That current causes a magnetic field in the core and if this were direct current, the DC, if this were just connected up to a battery, that would be the end of it. That magnetic field would just build up to a certain value and we would basically magnetize this core. But it's not DC, this is alternating current. So that alternating current causes an alternating magnetic field in that core. That alternating magnetic field in the core then induces a potential in all of the secondaries. So this has three secondaries. There's two associated with the power supply, uh, this top one and the center one that has a center tap. And then there's the bottom one down here at the bottom that is providing power to the filaments. And so you can see that this is just a simple winding. It comes out here, it's noted as XX. That XX then connects to the filaments. So it connects to this one, this one, and this 76 over here. So that provides the power to the filament and we know that that's providing about 6 volts because the part number on the vacuum tube is a 6L 6G and the 6 is the voltage of the filament. So this bottom winding is providing about 6 volts to drive that filament in each of those vacuum tubes. Okay, now one thing to notice is that because this winding is completely isolated, if any electrons leave that filament, what would happen is this would eventually build up a potential. As you know, each electron left, it would leave this part of the circuit just a little bit more positive. Over time, this could build up some very large positive voltages. So that's why this is connected to ground. This is what we would use now as an earth ground and what they actually meant in this was a chassis ground. They didn't have an earth ground at that time. The receptacles was only, were only two pin receptacles. There wasn't a grounding pin. And if you look at this uh, amplifier, this entire amplifier is just floating. It's sitting on a wooden cabinet. And so while the case is metal and everything in that amplifier is connected to that case, as you could see in the previous video, we're going to talk about this as an earth ground simply because we are going to earth this. When we have the earth ground, we can use that as basically a storage of electrons. We can either send electrons off to earth or we can take electrons off of earth. Now, while I usually am strongly in the camp of saying current 
is the flow of positive charge, just because intuitively I like it better that way. When working on vacuum tube circuits, I kind of prefer to do the opposite. I think of current as being the negative charge because with these vacuum tubes, it's, it's the electrons that are doing all of the work. This circuit, there isn't much more to say about it. It's an AC circuit. We're running alternating current through all of these filaments. These filaments are just turning on. They're glowing brightly like little light bulbs in each of these vacuum tubes. And that filament can't stray very far from ground or chassis or earth because this winding of the transformer is actually connected to earth. So let's look at these other two windings. This is actually where the power to run the amplifier come from. And first, let's look at this top. So all we have is a, a very simple little circuit. We have the winding from the transformer. This is putting out about five volts, as we can see from the part number on the, the uh, vacuum tube. So this winding from the transformer is just coming out and it's going back into the winding. So we just have a little circuit. This is again alternating current. So at 60 hertz it's going, you know, flipping from being counterclockwise to clockwise and back to counterclockwise just like a regular sine wave coming out of the 60 hertz. While it's doing that, it's flipping back and forth. If this has two little filaments down here, these filaments have a sharp corners. The electric field is going to be very high. They're hot. And so their electrons are relatively free to leave. That builds up a potential on this portion of the circuit. So as we can see over time, what happens is this portion of the circuit, and they have noted here, they expect that during operation, this circuit is going to go up to 320 volts. Okay, so where do those electrons go and why do they choose to leave? Well, this top circuit is only responsible for providing electrons and getting these two filaments hot. Then what happens is this portion of the winding of the transformer has two ends. So if we consider that this center is at Earth, because it's connected to the ground right here, to the chassis. During half of the wave, the top portion of this transformer winding is positive. The other half, it's negative. And then during the other half of the wave, this portion is negative and the alternating half is positive. So these take turns that between being positive for half a waveform and negative for half a waveform. So what happens is we have the electrons on the filament and they see this little plate as being either strongly negative when it has a when this transformer is basically pushing the electrons up to this end they see this plate as being strongly negative and the electrons would just as soon stay on the filament they have no reason no incentive to leave this filament because their the electric field they see is very very low because they're negative and this plate is negative. But as this winding goes more positive, meaning that this top has a lack of electrons then, it has a positive charge, then the electrons see a very strong electric field and they will leave this filament and flow into the plate and become part of this circuit. So they basically have jumped out of this circuit and down to become a part of this circuit. And of course at the end of the day they all meet up back together at the earth and how many leave from this top little circuit into the bottom circuit simply depends on the potential difference. So again, each of these two filaments are adjacent to these two plates. And when the electric field is favorable for the electrons to leave this filament and go into this plate, they do. And they flow in mass from this filament to that plate. While this plate is positive, this other plate is going to be negative. So the electrons on this right filament will go into this plate because that plate is positive, while the electrons on the left filament will not go into that plate because that plate is also negative. Half a cycle later, now the right plate is negative and the left plate is positive. The electrons then leave this left filament and flow into that adjacent plate. So the upshot is while we had an alternating current come in, and that gave us an alternating potential on this circuit that gave us an alternating current in this circuit. The net result is that each of the half waves are allowed to leave either from this filament or from the left filament. 
as more and more electrons leave, this grows more and more and more positive. And so we now have a surplus of positive charge in this circuit that we can run through the rest of the amplifier to do our business. The electrons that we stripped off, they come down into this portion of the transformer and they essentially come and go into Earth. Okay, so next time we'll talk about this filtering on the power supply and then we'll jump up into the actual amplifier section. So I hope that was useful. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know and uh, thank you for watching.